Good morning everyone, welcome back to the 120th. Today we are going to be looking at the Voigtlander Bessa 1. A beautiful 1950s medium format folder. Um, takes 120 film, shoots 6x9 frames. Uh, this one I've recently picked up and has a lot of fungus in the lens. So I'm going to go straight out to the workshop and let's get rid of this fungus. I will show you how bad it is when we get out there. All right, let's go. We can take a torch and just shine it across the lens. The lens is filthy, number one, but it also has that characteristic kind of um, organic looking cotton type look. So you're gonna need the following things to uh, perform this operation. Um, some means of taking the lens apart, so you are going to need a lens spanner, probably. Uh, these things, which are they're called lens wrenches or whatever, they're basically um, tubes, conical tubes of, of a rubbery sort of type substance that, that will help you to twist off stubborn things that don't wish to be twisted off. Um, a torch is useful, as you saw already. Uh, you can do with some kind of soft cloth upon which to put things that is preferably as clean as possible. Um, so we're going to take our lens pieces out and we're going to put them here. Um, you are then going to need some water, a bowl, preferably uh, a plastic bowl, or, or if you're going to use a glass bowl then you can put like a lining in the bottom so it doesn't scratch. You are then going to need hydrogen peroxide and ammonia. I'm going to leave those two things out of the way until we absolutely need them because uh, the hydrogen peroxide is pretty nasty stuff and the ammonia is pretty nasty stuff as well so um, we're not going to open those up until we are ready to use them. Right then, let's take this lens apart. The standard setup for this kind of camera is you'll have one or more elements on the front here, you'll then have the aperture blades and the shutter blades and then a couple of elements on the back um, or one or more elements on the back so I don't actually know what this lens consists of let's find out the first thing we're going to do is uh, take the lens and shutter mechanism off and we're going to do that by coming at it from the back and we're going to use we're going to start off with our lens spanner to uh, just try and loosen this retaining ring lens spanners are an absolute pain in the ass i have made more scratches on more cameras with lens spanners than with any other tool so i would recommend you just use it to start things off and then use a screwdriver right then we should now be able to if we open the the front back up, so that will now come out there, alright that should now lift out. We'll start with this rear lens element, uh, there's no notches on it so it looks like it's probably just a... Right, there we go, it's ready to come out. And there is our first piece. So as discussed, that is a single element or group, whichever one it is, um, on this side of the shutter. So this inner ring is coming loose. This is where we need to start concentrating on how these things are coming apart. So it is really important that these lens pieces go back together exactly the same way that they came out otherwise your lens is not going to function properly. It is slightly um, convex on one side and concave on the other and it is concave down, i.e. concave towards the back of the lens. So we're going to put that on there and I'm laying these out as they're coming out of here. So that's one lens element out. Let's uh, see about the next one. It looks like we're probably going to have to remove these um, Move the focus ring. You don't always have to take the focus ring off to get the lens elements out. Every lens is different. Um, but bear in mind that if you do have to take the focus ring off, then you are going to have to recalibrate uh, it so that it, uh, so the lens markings are still correct once you've finished. There we go. So 
that is just an empty ring. Now we're going to unscrew the focusing helicoid, uh, which will have at least one piece of glass in it. Uh, the goal here is to get down to just the glass so that you can submerge in your hydrogen peroxide and ammonia mix. So we're trying to get the glass out from the frames that it sits in. Once again, pay close attention to which way around it comes out. This one came out like this. Put that face down and then concave on one side, convex on the other. And the concave was facing forwards. There is actually more glass in there, so... <clears throat> Oh, got it. All that's left is the bare shutter. So I'll put the shutter aside. And this is where all the fungus is. Can you see that? Look at that. There's a good, healthy growth. Right, I have no idea if this piece is supposed to come out or not but I can't figure out a way of getting it out. So I'm going to, what I'll do is I'll, I'll um, create the solution that we're gonna put everything in. We'll put those two lenses in, the ones that we got clear, and then I will do this one with, um, it's the cotton bud. I'm gonna put on the fan, uh, some gloves, and I probably will actually put on some eye protection as well, just cause I'm right in here with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do basically a 50-50 solution of each of the things I've got. The reason I'm diluting this is because I have bottles of very strong um, ammonia and hydrogen peroxide. My hydrogen peroxide is like 15% hydrogen peroxide. Um, and you just don't need that kind of strength. Most people use three. I think you could do it stronger than three, so maybe five or seven, something like that. So I'm going to dilute 50 50 to give me a kind of a seven and a half percent solution. A little bit more. Okay. Next up, hydrogen peroxide. I wouldn't normally measure this. I'm doing this for you. I'm going to do 100 ml. Straight in. I literally keep this like packed up in the box that it came in because it's just horrible. Oof, there it is. Oh, oh God. You'll have to forgive me. I'm going to spend the rest of this video like this. The little lens in first. Let's just drop that in. And we'll just pop the other one in as well. While those two lenses are cooking in that solution, I'm now going to use a Q-tip to uh, clean the, the glass that I couldn't get free of its frame rather than submerge the whole thing in that slightly brutal uh, ammonia and hydrogen peroxide solution. I'll just do it with a, a Q-tip or a cotton bud uh, dipped in the solution. Right then, show you this again. So happy with that one. Let's just lift these straight out of here and straight into the water. They're both covered in um, bubbles where they've been fizzing. Straight into the water and straight into the water. That one. I'm going to dispose of this solution. It's powerful stuff, that ammonia. I'm going to polish these up properly in a minute. All I'm doing for now is just drying them off. This is, of course, just water now. I'm not putting my bare hands in peroxide and ammonia. Also looking pretty clear. So, right then. And there is that one. So now we're gonna put it all back together again. The shutter really is in very good condition for its age. I would say that looks pretty good. Aperture blades around the back here. I'm now putting all the pieces back together in the reverse order of how they came out and making sure they're the right way around, of course. Seems pretty happy. 
Right then, in goes this one. Uh, putting the focus ring back on, I wouldn't worry too much for now about exactly how it goes back on because we're going to adjust it later. And then we can put this final piece into here. Everything looks to be aligned. And I think you will appreciate that is a notable improvement. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that job. Um, the glass is looking clean. Uh, I'm hoping that's going to perform pretty well. Now, the next job that I need to do before I can take this out and shoot is um, readjust, calibrate this focus ring. The viewfinder is not linked to the lens, so you can't see what the focus is through the viewfinder. Therefore, these distance markings on the focusing ring are important. So the next job that I need to do, because we unscrewed this focusing ring, they will no longer be in the right place, or it's very unlikely they're gonna be in the right place. So the next thing we need to do is adjust that and make sure that all those distances are right. So let's go do that. What I need to do now is kind of calibrate it again and make sure that the distance measurements are, uh, are correct. And the way we're gonna do that is essentially by creating a kind of ground glass for um, for the better. And the way I'm gonna do that is by opening up the lens on a bulb setting, um, putting a flat piece of paper across the back and then focus on some stuff. I'll, I'll show you, it'll all, um, all make sense when I do it. I'm standing at my back door here and we're gonna use this house here as our infinity focus. So when I hold this piece of paper across here, it acts like a ground glass. That is the, let me see, that is now projecting an image onto here. What I can tell from that is that infinity focus is off. Infinity focus is there, I would say. It actually is important that I get this as accurate as I can. So I'm using a pair of uh, magnifying glasses. Okay, so we've got a good infinity focus now. What we are now gonna do, I'm just gonna undo these tiny grub screws again, here, here, and we're gonna rotate the indicator ring, I'm gonna rotate this ring without rotating the, the, the tube that's underneath it, so that it shows infinity. Once again, magnifying glasses out. Uh, I think I might be getting old because I can't see these little screws loosen that focus ring so that it moves freely without turning the ring underneath it and then rotate it so the arrow on the lens barrel is pointing to infinity on the focus ring and then tighten the screws back up again that should now give us a decent infinity focus let us try so that lens is wide open still and that Looks pretty good to me. Let's do a test to make sure to down the range. We're going to use the edge of this um, edge of this picnic table, the corner of that picnic table there. First thing to do is measure it with a tape measure so I know the actual distance. Uh, then I can check what the lens thinks it is against the actual distance. I made that 10 feet. there when so actually when checking that focus with the magnifier it is bang on nine and a bit whatever that I said on the thing so that is actually on the nail now I am happy this is focusing uh, we can close the shutter the Voigtlander Besser is fixed and ready for a shoot and that will be the next video if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And please join me for the next video, which will be uploaded very soon, uh, where I take this Voigtlander Besser out and um, start shooting some spectacular 6x9 negatives. Looking forward to it. All right. See you then.